All right, so good morning. Uh, this question um, is in your textbook. I believe it's number 37 in chapter 14. And this is a great question. So I had a request to make a video about this. Uh, we're asked to show the mechanism here to go from this epoxide to this, um, you know, new cyclic molecule. So, um, you know, right away we're, we're looking at closing the ring. There's going to be some sort of attack on the epoxide um, and we're acid catalyzed. So let's just sort of start going through what, what mechanism we can think of here. I think the first step, you know, anytime we're seeing oxygen, lone pair of electrons, and I've got H plus, acid catalyzed, I'm going to be doing a protonation. That's going to be the, the first thing that we'll, we'll draw out. And so then we can draw out the product of that. I know that it's tempting to take shortcuts here um, and not draw out every single structure, but just, you know, put in a little extra time to, to make it make it work. Um, it'll, it'll definitely benefit you in the long run. So from here, now I'm gonna start thinking about how do I get this five-membered ring and sort of looking at the number of carbons, look at the sort of connectivity that I see here. Obviously, I think this double bond, that's gonna be sort of attacking one of these carbons. And really we need to think about which of those carbons it's going to attack. I think maybe we might be thinking, oh yeah, it'll, it'll just attack this carbon here. You know, sterically speaking, it's less hindered. Um, but this is one of those cases where electronics is gonna play a bigger role. So I've got a positive charge here on my oxygen, formal positive charge, and I'm gonna have that positive charge distributed over these two carbons. Now, this carbon, since it's more substituted, will bear more of that positive charge, and these electrons will have a better, you know, easier job interacting with that more substituted carbon. So the next step that I'm gonna draw looks like this. Um, another reason that I know that that's going to be the case is because I'm forming a five-membered ring. If I want to label my carbons here, I'm going to go A, B, C, D, and E. So one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to sort of make a new bond between A and E and kick these electrons off as a sort of a leaving group of this OH. This is going to be, you know, the, the key step of this to form that five-membered ring. So Let's see if we can draw this out. I'm gonna start with a five membered ring. I'm gonna say that this is A, I'm sure you guys can see. B, C, D, and E. So I'm forming a new bond between E and A. That's where these electrons here are gonna come from. Off of D, I've got a methyl group. So this is my methyl group here. And I've also got a positive charge now on D. So if I sort of you know think about What's going on here? I'm removing electrons from D between D and E, and I'm putting those electrons between A and E. So D is gonna sort of lose some electrons. It's gonna be left with a positive charge, and I've got a methyl group there. That's a, a tertiary carbocation, so that seems totally reasonable, I think. Now, we have to deal with this other piece that's sort of left from A as a leaving group. I've got a CH2, and then I've bonded to an OH, and that's coming off of A, so I'm just gonna draw like this my CH2, and then my OH represented by this you know, system here. So then the next step, I've got water. So let's put plus H2O. And that's how I'm gonna get this um, hydroxide group, my OH alcohol group there. So I can have water come in. Let's draw this over here. And I'll have this bound water with a positive charge. And then to get to my final product, I can again just use another water molecule to deprotonate. And that will lead me to my final um, diol product. So that mechanism, I think, is, is a great mechanism. There's a lot of little, you know, great pieces there um, that we need to think about. This, I think, would definitely be the key. I think the first step, you know, the protonation, we should, we should be on board with that at this point in time. Um, but this step, the ring closing step, we really need to sort of ask ourselves, well, what does need to be put together? You know, what, where, how do I make this five membered ring? Where are the other pieces? And then be consistent, right? And drawing this out step by step, you know, really is, is a nice way to do it. So I would, I would definitely encourage you guys, um, when you're doing a problem like this, give it a shot, write everything out, and then, you know, just make sure everything matches up and makes sense. All right.